everyone, my name is Abdur and I'm an MSc in Applied Computing student at the University of Toronto. About a year ago, I made an app to sync Kindle highlights to Notion. I also made a video explaining how you can use this app to sync your Kindle highlights to Notion. Now, that app did work, but there were some issues with the way I distributed it. You see, it required users to download software and dependencies and install everything on their local system. So basically, that code was running on their local machine. This meant that the code would be running on several different types of hardware. And since everyone's system is set up differently, uh, there could be issues related to dependency or software compatibility. I got several emails from non-technical folks who had difficulties setting this app up because it required them to install tools like Git and Node Package Manager or NPM, uh, which is usually the kind of tools that are required by programming professionals. So I decided to change this app and release an updated version where users can just use this app without any programming knowledge and without having to install anything locally. Yes, that's right. You don't have to install anything locally on your system now in order to use this app. Everything works right out of the browser. So let us see how you can set up and use this app. All right, I'm on my Mac right now. I'll just go to the GitHub repository uh, where, we, where I have the updated Kindle to Notion app. And here you can see the updated usage step, how you can use this app to sync your highlights from Kindle to Notion, as well as the new steps to set this up for the first time. So uh, in this video, I'll first walk you guys through the entire setup process as I do it myself, and then we'll take a look at how we can use this app. So the first step here in the setup process is to duplicate my uh, Notion books database. So I'm just going to open this in a new tab here. And once that is done, let's click on duplicate. And I have two workspaces. This is my primary workspace, and this is a workspace that I had created for tutorials. So I'll just select this one. And it says it's duplicating the library to my uh, secondary workspace, and it might take a while. So if you want, you can go grab a cup of coffee, have some snacks, and when, when that's done, we'll get back. So now that the library has been copied, library or the books, template has been copied what you have to do is you have to delete every single book that is present in this database I'm just going to delete it and as you can see now it's completely empty now I'll just arrange this so that it looks more presentable and yeah that's not necessary but yeah and apart from that we'll move to the next step so we're done with the first step uh, the next step is to create an internal integration at this link once again I'll open this in a new tab and over here, I already have my primary integration, which is created. What we're going to do is create a new one. And I'll call this book highlights tutorial. Okay. Uh, associated workspace is going to be up this notion, because that is where I'm going to, uh, where I have the database present. And then I'm going to click on submit. So it gives me the internal integration token, we'll, uh, we can show it, we can even copy it. Now, the next step is to uh, go to your Notion dashboard, open your uh, books database as a page, click on the three dots icon and go to add connection. And we're going to add the integration that we just uh, created. So we'll go to the library. So this is the secondary workspace where I've created this empty uh, database. Well, we're going to open this as a full page and then we're going to click on add connections and over here we'll search for book and let's give it some time it does uh, take a while to reflect yep so it took about five minutes for it to get reflected and once we see the book highlights tutorial which is the integration we just created we're going to click and hit confirm so now book highlights tutorial which is the connection we created is added as a connection as a integration connection to this database and using this uh, integration token we can send data and retrieve uh, data from this database we'll use that in a minute we'll first move to the next step the next step is to go to the database uh, click on share and copy the url to that database and from that url we're going to extract the database id so we'll go to this books database, we'll click on share, and then 
we're going to copy the link. Once we have the link copied to the clipboard, what we're going to do is we're going to paste it somewhere and, and extract the database ID from it. So basically everything that is between the first slash after uh, your user ID and the first question mark is nothing but the database ID. So this part is the database ID. So I'm just going to extract that again. I'm just going to paste it over here and we see the first slash and the first question mark. So this part is the database ID. I'm just going to copy it to my clipboard and I'll keep it safe. So this is what we need as the database ID. And uh, the next step is to connect your Kindle e-reader to your computer, navigate to Kindle, and go to documents and copy myclippings.txt. So this is where you have to connect your Kindle uh, e-reader physically to your computer and then you need to uh, extract the myclippings.txt file which basically contains um, all of the highlight information that you have taken on your Kindle e-reader. Now I've already done that. I have this file available in my uh, documents folder. You can go ahead and do this step. We'll move on to the next step after this, which is to create a GitHub repository and add your myclippings.txt file to the root of the repository. And then uh, you have to add a file called sync.yaml to the repository at location uh, GitHub workflows with the following content. So let's go to uh, github.com and create a new repository. I'm going to name this Kindle High Lights. This is the repository which will contain myclippings.txt file. So you need to create a repository like this for yourself as well. And over here, you don't need to do anything. You just have to say create repository. And once that is done, you need to click on creating a new file. And over here, you have to uh, write, uh, <clears throat> write down this, which says dot github slash workflow. So this is the path where you need to create a new file which does all the magic and in that you have to say sync.yaml so basically this file is going to be under dot github folder uh, under which there is another folder called workflows and inside that there is this file sync.yaml and this file will contain this entire content so you don't have to do anything just copy it down and paste it exactly as it is no need to change anything in it once that is done just click on commit new file all right and that is done you can go back to code so here you see there is just one file which is present under dot github slash workflows and now what you need to do is you need to upload your myclippings.txt file i'll go ahead and do that so i'll click on add file upload file and here i'll click on choose your files go to documents i'll go to kindle i'll copy myclippings.txt so this is my uh, clippings file and I'll just click on commit changes. All right, so now my clippings.txt is present as well as the workflow sync.yaml file. Uh, you don't have to worry about this uh, at all. You just have to uh, worry about this. Now, this itself would have trigger, triggered something called as a GitHub action run uh, or a GitHub workflow run. And this will fail because we haven't really changed uh, the required settings which come come up as the next step in the setup process. So let's take a look at them now So the next step is uh, And yes over here It says that the above step step is going to trigger a github action or a github workflow to sync the highlights But it's going to fail as we haven't set up these uh, Secret values. So let's do that next. So what we'll do here is we'll go to um, The repository that you just created click on settings and then go to secrets and variables, click on actions. And here you have to create one secret and one variable. The secret will have the name notion API key. So if you see here, it says notion API key. So this is the name of the secret. Just copy this new repository secret. The name will be notion API key and the value is going to be this. This is exactly what you need to copy. This is the integration that you created and this is the integration token. So this is what you're going to paste here and add secret. Okay, now let's create the variable that is required. So we'll click on variables, new repository variable. 
and the name of the variable is going to be book dbid i'll click on that paste it here and the value of book dbid is what you extracted at this step this is the id that you need to paste now i already have it stored in my clipboard history so i'm just going to copy it from there uh, but you can copy it down and paste from wherever you have it so i'll just paste it down here and click on add variable and uh, yeah so we have secrets and variables added now the next step is to we need to allow the workflow or the actions which is running which is actually doing all the work to uh, read and write to this database uh, to, uh, i'm sorry to this repository and the reason we need this is there is something called as a cache which is present uh, in this entire flow um, and and the reason we have it is we don't want to sync every single thing every every time so for example if you already have 100 highlights and you just uh, added two more highlights you don't want the previous 100 highlights to resync again you just want the new highlights to uh, sync so just to make the sync incremental it's going to store a cache and it's going to do that automatically all we have to do is allow this workflow run to um, make changes to this repository so we'll go to settings again and uh, it says we have to go to repository settings and then workflow permissions and click on read and write permissions so in the general setting itself if we just scroll down uh, no, no it's not over here i think it's the actions and general yep over here we have to go to workflow permissions and right now it says read repository contents and package permission but what we want is we want to provide it read and write permissions so we click that and we hit save once that is done all the setup from our end is complete now what we have to do is we need to trigger this workflow manually um, I'll tell you why. So the way it works is every single time you upload um, or you make a change to this repository in any way. So let's say if you upload a new uh, myclippings.txt. So over time, let's say after two months, you have a new myclippings.txt which contains more number of highlights. You just hit uh, add file, upload files, and then you just select that uh, new myclippings.txt and that will trigger the actions to run and it's automatically going to sync but since this is the first time we are going to run it manually so we'll go to actions and the actions tab and here we'll click on sync kindle highlight this is the name of the action we're going to click on run workflow and run workflow now this is going to trigger the workflow run manually and over here right now if you say see there is nothing present in this database and uh, if we go to actions we see that this is running we click on it we can click on this as well and we can see what all is happening so you see every single thing is running inside this runner you don't have to install anything everything works directly in the web browser uh, everything runs on cloud you don't really have to worry about anything you see it says that these books are not present and it's creating these books and it's syncing the highlights and if i go to books page uh, notion this is the uh, just like two minutes back this was completely empty and now you see uh, it's being populated by books and if i click on these you'll see that even the highlights are present inside it So this is how uh, the sync works at the moment. And if you see, it, it ran successfully because there's a green tick. And if I go to actions, you can see uh, these three runs failed because, and these happened because we were setting up uh, without, we were setting up the repository and some of the settings were off. But once everything is configured, you see we get a green tick. Now, let's say that after a while, uh, you, are, you got your myclippings.txt updated, you've got new clippings. Just you, all you have to do is you don't have to do any code you don't have to touch anything just go to your repository via your web browser click on add file upload files choose your file and select the new myclippings.txt i'll just select the old one itself i don't have it updated and I'll, I'll just click on commit changes this is going to make a change to your repository which will trigger uh, a workflow to run and that workflow is going to resync everything whatever is new not everything uh, uh, apologies not everything it's just going to sync whatever new highlights were added and over here if i click on uh, the logs and if i show you 
it will say that all the books were already synced so it did not make any new syncs and that is how the cache works so if i go back to the repository and if i show you the code you'll see there's a new file which was created automatically called sync.json so this is how kindle to notion or this app maintains the state as to how many highlights of each book have already been synced so that way it determines whether or not new highlights were added and so if new highlights are added then it uh, only, it only syncs the highlights incrementally only the highlights that are newly added are synced to the repository uh, to the database so this is how exactly you set up um, the uh, kindle to notion app and uh, as i said in the usage it just says that you have to upload a new version of your myclippings.txt file you don't have to do anything else and this was all about the setup i don't really want to go into a lot of technical details as to how this app works at least in this video so if you guys are interested in learning how this app works and how i've distributed in the way that we don't really have to do much of coding in order to get this app set up and running so if you're interested do let me know and i'll probably create a video in the near future so that was all for today i hope you like the new version of the app much better than the previous one thanks a lot for watching and i'll catch you later